just a couple bad weather fans representing New York, talking all things sports. Man, what could go wrong? We got Alex, who's a fan of the Knicks, and Mike of the Nets, the yin yang of the tri-state. Place your bets on the Yankees, Giants, Mets, or Jets. Yeah, you should listen if this sparking your interest. If you made a vow to your team, don't break it. Bad weather fans is the relation. relation, relation. That's right, these Bad Weather fans, episode number 86, take two. Mike Baseglia, my voice just cracked. Alex Benesowitz, we're on one God. tonight. So let's, uh, we, we've got a lot to unpack and we'll do it here. Okay, a couple of things. We were in the middle of doing our episode and I get a text from my dad and he says, Kyrie Irving, and my dad's, I guess he's the intern for this, the producer or something. Producer, yes. He goes, he goes Kyrie Irving's on Instagram, Instagram Live. And my first thought was, Oh, God. Because <laughs> I knew we were in the middle of doing this whole conversation. We had some great net points, Nick points, whatever. Uh, but we, we had to go. We had to listen on Instagram Live. So I'll start with that. Let me lay everything out. I'm going to be like Mr. Producer here and give a rundown what's about to happen. We're going to break down Kyrie Irving's Instagram Live, live Ugh. on Bad Weather Fans. What we'll do next is after that, we had a really cool conversation about the Knicks and Nets in general that we still want you guys to hear. Don't look so upset, Alex. So we will then play you that back. And then we actually have a really cool interview for you guys. It's Carrie Kittles, part of the New Jersey Nets team that went to the NBA finals in 2001, 02, 2002, 03. Should mention, and obviously I think it goes without saying at this point, we recorded with Carrie Kittles before Kyrie Irving went on Instagram live. Not that we really got into, not that we went deep dive into Kyrie, but I will say, I just want to let the audience know that with a frame of reference of when we did have the conversation, it was before the Instagram live. So Alex, Mike, what's up? How are you? So yeah, no, the, the Carrie Kittles interview is not dated that badly because no, we didn't no, really no, no, no. go into details good. about if he's getting it, if he's not getting it. It's just no, like, no. if he's here, if he's not here, it's pretty much, that's it. We'll so the that. Carrie Kittles thing, we'll, 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 yeah. yeah, but we, you know, how are you? I'm good. That's great. We were talking about the Knicks preseason win. That's great. And then 20 minutes into our chat, all of a sudden Mike gets a text from his dad, like we have to end this because Kyrie's going live and everything we just said is bullshit. <laughs> like the whole, pretty the whole, much. Like, you know, like uh, my cousin Vinny scene where he's like, everything that guy just said that, is bullshit. That's <laughs> like, my that's favorite exactly. line from the movie and maybe my favorite line of all time. And that's where uh, Vinny falls asleep. Yeah, he falls he asleep in court to give, yeah. his, to, to, to give his perspective. <laughs> and he, everything that guy just said is bullshit. It's pretty much what happened. We had a good we, it was really good. What we said, nobody will ever hear it. No, maybe we'll play the blooper. The you'll blooper. Well, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll hear. We had a good argument. You know, you'll hear it soon about Knicks and Nets fans and why Knicks fans hate, like got so happy with the Nets fans and then how everything fell apart and etc. So we don't need to do too long here because it's kind of redundant. But Kyrie let's went on IG it. live and let's talk about it. What, what part do you want to get to first? So we'll start. <laughs> he with said, the whole he said a lot. He said a lot, but didn't say anything, in my opinion. But go ahead, yeah. Mike. You know, no, he yeah. said a lot, but he he did have a few good quotes, and I think a few things that are worth bringing up. And then the rest of it was probably just spinning around in circles because if you're going to be on Instagram Live that long, you just say mm. the same thing over and over and over again, especially and, and by I yourself. Think, you're not in a conversation with somebody; you're yeah. just talking. You know, and yeah. I think the the big thing from him is he was saying, and I'll start with this: that he's not against the vaccine. He's just against having somebody tell him to take it. So he's cool if you or I want to get vaccinated. What irritates him is if somebody goes to him and mandates that he has to do it himself. And what I took from this is the the NBA said you don't have to get vaccinated, which you don't. That's not that's not a rule they have mandated. But mm-hmm. the city of New York said you had to. And he was like, well, wait a minute. The NBA said I didn't have to get vaccinated. Now the city's saying that I have to, and I think it just pissed him off to no end that he's this is something that he believes in not doing, and now he's going to be told someone's going to tell him to do that. No way, no how. I'm not being told what to do. I'm not doing this. I'm standing my ground. And I guess I feel from this, there's at least for the foreseeable future, define foreseeable, that's up to you. 
he's not going to be anywhere near this organization. No, but doesn't he come off like a little baby, you know, but they promised me to, I didn't have to get the vaccine, you know, like, come on, man. I mean, I don't feel like, I don't want to make fun of him, but it's kind of hard not to, it's to say, what would you do if they promised you certain exemptions and then you didn't get them? Well, the NBA promised him because they didn't know this law was going to be really coming. And then it came and now you have to get it. And what can we do? They did everything they could. They fought for him. They got the practice facility as a private building so he could practice with the team. The NBA did that for him. They did everything they could, but they couldn't get the mandate lifted for games because it would look terrible for the city to make the rich athlete be able to get skate above the rules when everybody else has to follow them and they couldn't let him play. And now we're here. And it's just, I don't know who he's mad at. Like he's placing his blame on the NBA or the nets. And then it's just, and the nets, maybe the NBA and the nets are, are one here. And then he really should be mad at de Blasio in the city, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's just, who are you directing your anger at? And, you know, he said one quote that he said that was really eye opening, which shows he's not going to play was in my opinion, was the money thing. I don't know the exact quote. He said, you know, I'm giving up the money and, you know, it's not about the money. And if I lose it and everybody's saying you're going to lose all this money. So what? That's a direct quote. So what is what he said? So he's not playing. He's rich. He's taking a stand. He's standing up for everybody who doesn't, who gets to be half, who's gotten fired and get mandated. But guess what, Kyrie, you standing up for yourself and, and standing up for those people is not going to give those people their jobs back. You're not doing anything. Like all you're doing is hurting your teammates and yourself and making yourself look kind of silly. And if you don't want to get vaccinated, that's your choice. I respect that. I respect Bradley Beal. He said, I'm not getting vaccinated. He doesn't have to because the city doesn't, doesn't mandate it. But at least he said, even Andrew Wiggins said, I don't want to get it. He didn't say respect my privacy, respect my privacy, respect my privacy, respect my privacy. And now come out at 1045 at night on Instagram live and say a bunch of nothing. Well, what I mean, if if, if (laughs) you know Kyrie Irving, of course it was almost you're surprised. We're surprised by it, but really not. I mean, 11 o'clock at night on a Wednesday, he's not going to go through the media. He's going to do it his way. And Instagram live gives him his voice to that. He can do that. And something I mentioned before was it was time to, he, it was time to talk, you know, you, you want to be the voice for people. Then you're going to have to use it. You're going to have to talk, talk with it. I want to give the exact quote. Uh, here it is. Uh, Kyrie Irving says on Instagram live that he's against vaccines being mandated, mandated, as they are for the Nets players in New York City, but he's not anti-vax. Irving also says, don't believe that I'm retiring due to the vaccine mandate. And I saw a good uh, perspective here from the Glue Guys, the Nets podcast uh, on Twitter. And they're like, well, if anything, that gives maybe the Nets a little more leverage that if they do want to try to trade him, at least he just told everybody that he does not want to retire. And it's it sucks too, because I was... Alex, how many weeks ago I was talking with Ryan Hickey on and I was defending Kyrie in the sense of you can't trade him for Ben Simmons. You can't make that deal from a talent standpoint and on an organizational standpoint. It doesn't make sense because of the puzzle pieces at this point. Now it's like, yeah, I, I think I'd have anybody, to, anything. The yeah. only part yeah, that anything, I wouldn't, yeah. here's why I, this would be the scary part of trading Kyrie to the Sixers for Simmons. He could play. <laughs> yeah. And he will. And he'll, he and would hurt torment you. the Nets. He right. would him and it's not even your us. fault. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he'd play. So that's why maybe I wouldn't do the deal. Kind of being tongue in cheek here. But man, it's just a never ending. It's just a never ending pool of vomit drama. And it continues again. And here it is from Kyrie Irving. And I'm glad he spoke. I'm glad it's out there. I'm glad he's made his comments. And I mean this. I'm ready so desperately move on move on from this whole thing i've had enough of it i've had enough of reading about it i've had enough about nick fans making fun of it and saying i told you so i told you so i'm done with all of them especially the nick fans that don't even watch the nets play and come up with the most asinine takes that don't even make sense there's somebody in particular that's been driving me utterly insane it's not you i won't mention who it is but driving me crazy with this snarkiness and dumb dumb points Point is, I'm ready to move on from it. I'm ready to break down the Nets, Kevin Durant, James Harden, and the best medicine for all of this is Tuesday (laughs) night when the Nets invade Milwaukee. And I'm sure it'll be a huge part of the conversation on the broadcast, but we can just get to basketball and enjoy it. And I mean this, Kyrie. You want your space. You don't want to be a part of this. Good riddance. Let's move on. That said, if you want to come back, we'll be waiting for you. 
<laughs> I can't wait for a second quarter of the Nets game and Kyrie goes on IG Live in the middle of the Nets game. <laughs> Imagine that. You're like Kyrie's breaking I, yeah. down the Nets game. <laughs> that would be like, so you should funny. Be here. Oh my God. I hope hey that guys, happens. If you're sick of the TNT broadcast, maybe you, you know you, you want you don't want to hear Stan Van Gundy and whoever the hell is doing the game with him. Richie Let Miller. Do, or could something. you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> give him the idea that would be unbelievable commentary oh my god him breaking down the nets on instagram live is there something against that i guess not uh, no he's not working for anybody he's, i don't know if there's rules when the team plays there might be like i don't know i don't know I well no he can't broadcast the game but he can talk he can you know talk, he can do whatever course. he can talk he can't get play by play you know but he can talk oh this play is this and this is that but you know what? He's reached the level of Stefan Marbury because Stefan Marbury was the, the crazy New York point guard for a while. He went to China, resurrected his career and his life. That's great. Good for him. But he's a little off. And he was in the comments praising Kyrie Irving. And that's where you're at right now, man. And that's in the nicest way I can say it. And it's it's just to the point where what is like... I, <laughs> You're, it's not about the money and you don't want the money and who cares if you lose money, but you're also saying you're not retiring, but you're also saying you're not getting vaccinated, but you're not uh, anti-vax, but you're not, you're anti, like, it's just like, there's a lot of like, you're saying a lot, but not really anything. I know you kind of explained the vaccine point, which makes sense where he's saying he's just against people getting mandated to get vaccinated and he wants to take a stand for those people. But like I said, doing this is not going to force those people to get their jobs back or get vaccinated. All you're doing is hurting yourself and your teammates and your best friend. So, and Michael Biseglia. And I said, Michael on purpose. So uh, it's just, uh, it been, gets, it gets, it's just like makes my blood boil. And yeah, like, I don't getting... really care either way. It's just, it's like, what are you like? You're not, deep dude you know what i mean like you're you're just saying you don't want to get vaccinated because you were told one thing and another that's it end of story i, I think it's what are you simple. talking about I, for a I, half hour i think you know what I'm a, saying? alex <laughs> i, I really i really believe it's as simple as and i think he's using the voice as the voice the voice thing and i i truly think it's just a matter of they said i could do it now you're mm -hmm. telling me i can't i'm gonna hold my ground end of story okay well, I think, enjoy I think losing a year of your career. Enjoy losing a year of your career. And now, that doesn't mean it can't that... change. Doesn't mean it can't change. It doesn't. It doesn't mean it can't change. But right now, it doesn't look good. If I'm it Kevin Durant, I'm breaking into his apartment or his house, Don't and I'm just shooting it. him Don't. in the arm and be like, Psh, here you go. <laughs> Come on. Now you're vaccinated. What does Kevin Durant think right now? And, and Oh, my God. He He'll never say it publicly, but at some point he might snap. But I, I don't think he he's too real, like as in a good way. Where that's right, his he would boy. never do that to his he's boy. ride or die with his boy and he'll right. he might yell it and curse down him behind closed doors but with james he'll yeah. never say it you know he'll never say it out loud james harden seems to be getting tired of it he might snap because at that press conference today he was like he talked to Kyrie. he's like no no <laughs> and then he was out the best thing for this team is to play basketball yeah. it's just it's just time yeah it's just time Talk about over. something else yeah I, you know i wonder how Kyrie will feel in like so like right now i'm thinking human emotions like right now he's on his He's, you know, he's, he's taking his stance, but I wonder like two, three months when you're just kind of, you're watching it and the guys are having fun, you get jealous. You know what I mean? Like if somebody were to, yeah, if somebody yeah. were to do bad weather fans and fill in for me, like I was like, I took a stance where I wouldn't do the podcast with you and Dolan J Trump did it for a couple months and you guys were having fun and joking around. I'd probably get Growing. jealous and feel, you know, I'd yeah. be like, I want to, I want back in the party. I wonder if that any of that will happen. I don't know. That's how yeah, well, it, it will. It will. Because you talk about you talk to like you see uh, interviews with ex football players and like Joe Montana, for example, after he retired. I remember seeing an interview with him. He's like the first season I didn't play. What I missed the most was Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. You're getting to the stadium. The crowd's going nuts. You're going through the lineup and this and you're getting excited to play and the scheming and the excitement. But what he doesn't miss is Tuesday and Monday when you're in pain, and, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, it's over, you know, so there is going to be that itch. It's just, you know, and it's not football. So it's, you know, your body doesn't take that kind of beating. So, but there definitely will be that kind of itch from him, but you might see him just show up random parks and start balling. Like that'd be cool. But you know, you're, what do you, what, what is the end game? I keep saying that not as said on this episode, previous episodes, what is his end game? to make sure that vaccine mandates are lifted. Like, what is that? Is that your end game? Because you're not going to win that battle. Like, you're yeah, not going to win. Yeah, there's just <laughs> so, so much. Un, there's so much unclear. There's just a lot unclear. And that's why I, I think it boils down to he's upset that somebody 
he was told that he could play and now he can't. I, I, or the, that he needs the vaccine. He can play, obviously, if he that's wants a, to. It's a little immature. Choice. It's a little immature. It's, so it's, that's it, what it, it is. It's, it's if it's his... pure pride and principles, then that's a, that's that's really immature. Oh, well, I'm I mean, sorry. if it is, then think of think of the think of the people around him from team. But why didn't he just say this from the beginning? Why is oh, he no. doing the respect my privacy thing? So that's what the things it doesn't add up to me. No, like, it's, right. you're, you just say what you felt from the from the beginning, like Wiggins, like Beal, you stood They stood on their principles. Wiggins got it. And you looked upset and I respect that so much more than somebody who's hiding behind respect my privacy. And it comes out with some random Instagram live after torturing all of your teammates, and your friends and your fan base. And yeah, and he made a point that fans take this stuff seriously, and they do. This is like one of those athletes that's out of touch with how fans really feel about their team. It's part of you. The Knicks are a part of me. The Nets are a part of you as a person. It's part of your personality. It's in your blood. We are going to be here bef- after you're here. We were here before you were here, Kyrie. We're going to be here after you're here when we don't care about you anymore. You know what I mean? So it means a lot to us. I mean, the vulgarity and, and cursing a player out and tell him, get the fucking vaccine. What the hell is wrong with you? Um, you know, like that's a little too much, you know, like you're, you know, like things like that. That's a little too far, but to act like fans shouldn't care is a little bizarre to me. He said something along those lines. It's just, there was so much like watching, we were watching it together yeah, it on Zoom, and it was getting me mad. Yeah. We, he was getting me angry just listening to it because he wasn't saying anything, but he was saying things, but he wasn't saying anything. <laughs> you know, so well, and now I'm doing that. I'm doing the same thing. He was yeah, so we're, we're basically doing that. So we've uh, we've uh, we've exhausted it. We saw it um, and we'll see what happens That's and we'll it. see how they are moving forward. I'm excited to not have to talk about this for a while. But Kerry Kittles was great. We had Kerry Kittles on. Uh, Kittles we'll see him cool. tell him. Yeah, he was awesome. Uh, so before so. we get to Kerry, as I mentioned before, we did have some recordings that happened and we thought there were some fun back and forth Nets Knicks conversation that you guys will enjoy. So. That's kind of the latest on Kyrie Irving. It did break during bad weather fans, but we'll use that to transition to our net Nick conversation that actually occurred before this. So if there's bits and pieces of it that sound dated, it's because they might be, but the gist of the conversation is still there. So uh, here's our convo about how net and Nick fans are living in this world together and things that are coming from it. So enjoy y'all. I know you had a very fun day on Twitter and you were celebrating uh, very, very much. And it was weird for me to see you celebrate so much. I did not know because I guess I didn't know you during that time of the 2019 off season with the free agency. I didn't yeah. realize how big of a deal it was for you to see the Nets have a bad day. And I think you went on. Ext- I think a lot of people went on these extreme me- measures. And I know you're having fun with this fucking usher of burning, but it's like, <laughs> let it burn. The franchise, the franchise actually is. I will say this. I thought the Nets handled everything really well. Mm -hmm. I just the point from the Nick fan, like me and many others, I'm not going to speak for anybody else, but I believe a lot of people feel who are happy about what happened with the Nets. The whole uh, the Nets did this and now the Knicks look what the Knicks going to do. The Nets signed this guy and look what the Knicks can do. Why isn't it just about the Nets? Why you got to trash us when you're doing these great things? Just do the great things. What is that? Why are we involved in the headline? You know, Knicks don't sign free agents, but the Nets do. Like, why is that the headline? So that annoyed us. And on top of, well, annoyed me. And on top, on top of that, this whole situation broke that perfect perception that the Nets franchise had nationally. And that makes me extremely happy because it was enough. It was the culture thing. Oh, look at the culture. Guys, you went 42 and 40 and went and got, you know, lost in the don't, first round. Okay. Like, relax, guys. Like, you know what I mean? It was just went, it went through that whole, that whole, just, just the whirlwind of stories and tweets and videos and TV shows on how bad the Knicks were and look how great the Nets are. And it's just years and years of that. And then you fast forward to now and the Nets still haven't won anything. You're in year three of this. And now you're one of your players that you celebrated signing is not even is 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 not there because he's not getting vaccinated. And it's hilarious. And DeAndre Jordan's on another team. And that was the clean sweep. And there's only one guy left. I know you got Harden. So that helps everything. Imagine if you didn't get Harden where you would be right now. And it's just that overall is a win because the Knicks, the Nets went from the clear favorites. If they're all healthy, clear favorites, those big three guys, if they're all healthy, the Nets are the clear favorites to win the whole thing, not just the East, the whole thing. And now that Kyrie's gone, they're down a notch. They're back towards the pack a little bit because a little Nick injury here, a little Nick there. And you never know what can happen, like what happened last year. So that's what the cause for excitement was. Not that I'm rooting for injury, but you know what I mean? That's what the cause of excitement was, where it's like they're down a notch 
and the public, the perfect perception of the Nets organization has taken a major, major, major shot. I feel you. You know, I, and That's I, it. I, 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 congrats. And, and the day is <laughs> over and you move on. I mean, the truth of the matter. Oh, yeah, it's over it, now, but it was it's exciting. It's over now. It and yeah, and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, and I, it, enjoy it. Enjoy mm-hmm. your day. Enjoy your day. But like you've said to me and like you've said on this podcast and like you've said to other people, there's no off-season championship. So, yeah, you can have your fun watching the Nets have a bad day, but it doesn't take away that they are in the mix to win a title. You're right. Now, I'm disappointed because the Nets just lost their third best player, their most dy- one of their like, maybe their second dynamic score behind Kevin Durant, and he ma- it makes them a way less formidable team. They're not nearly as good without Kyrie Irving. True, and I know True. it's and it's it's a sensitivity on my I end when I see people then going like they're burning up this franchise is a disaster. Look what's happening. The franchise is not a disaster. If you look at what the Nets had to handle and what they did. Tell me what the Nets did wrong in all this and how they handled it. They tried. They tried what they could do for them. Well, we don't know because we don't know the ti- we don't know the timeline. We don't know what happened. But, That's but the I'm whole just, thing. Yeah. But I'm saying yeah. there wasn't like there's this PR nightmare and there's fighting and they're, they are unified in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And Kyrie yeah. Irving's on an island by himself, and they've moved on. I was in the uh, maybe I was tricking myself into this idea that he could be a part time player and that it could work. And they could just hoping for the best as a fan. You're hoping for the best. Yeah. What can you do? In reality, you know this, and uh, I'm not reinventing the wheel with this comment, but Katie and James had to be, be, had to be okay with this. There's no shot in hell as they should be, as they should be by the way, as any other team, it would be like that. Any any other team that that irritates me too. Like, Oh, NBA player, the top stars have decision-making ability. When you get to be that level and that good, and these guys are around you, they should have some decision level making ability because they're so important to the team. How could they not? Right. And even for the Knicks, when you heard the story on the Woj pod with Julius Randle last year, he went to dinner with Leon Rose and, and West and worldwide West and, and, and all these guys. And they said who, and he told them what he wanted. He wanted Thibs. He wanted this guy. He wanted that guy. And Leon Rose, you know, uh, you know, went to Dolan and told him his plan and, and Dolan fired Mills and got him out of there and brought Leon Rose in. And then, they hired Tibbs. They hired this guy. So Julius Randle, before he was even Julius Randle, decided on who the next coach of the Knicks was. So, of course, Durant and Harden are going to have a, a say in what happens with Kyrie Irving today. So there's yeah, your point. Yeah, I just defended the Nets. Not, Mike. Yeah, well, as you, you should, happy? Yeah, are you happy? Yeah, I just I'm very them. fucking happy about it. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I'm into that. And I, I, I'm i just I'm looking forward for basketball to start. And just mm-hmm. to get it going. And I, and I, I think the Nets are going to have a rough start to begin with. They've had looked terrible in the preseason. Their chemistry has been brutal. And they start in Milwaukee, in Philly. So it's a, tough, it's a tough stretch to begin. I wouldn't be surprised if the Nets come out of the gates and not have a great start to begin with. But it is an 82-game season. It is a long road to get down to the end of it. So I understand that. And, and also that brings me to the point of, okay, today is October. We're in mid-October. We have no idea what's this. If you think Kyrie Irving's just going to go in the distance, he'll he could retire. That's an option. He could just have some. He could the the, the mandate could change in three months. Mm-hmm. Maybe somebody gets to him and something happens along the lines where he has a change of heart and he gets the vaccine. To think that this is just over is crazy. There no, is there's so layers. much more coming along, and they will trust me. When they, when they, if that time comes, he'll be back. And there's, right. that's just the way it is. You might be angry about it. It might piss you off. It might go, oh, there's, there's something. Uh, when I was younger and when I saw this, uh, uh, back okay. in the 90s, no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> I would not say if somebody said, Mike, what's going to happen in the long run? And maybe this is my optimism speaking. I think at some point he will come back. But what's the next thing to happen when he leaves again? So I, right. I am at, the, I have finally gotten to that, that reality. It's, it's funny how like Cavs fans told Celtics fans, Celtics fans told Nets fans. And, you know, here we are. And now you're here. Well, I was trying to tell you, I mean, I don't know a global pandemic would come like I, who could predict that, but that something was going to happen to make this, you know, so, they, they needed to win as fast as possible because you can't keep punting on seasons and be like, Oh, we'll win next year. We'll win next year. This is not something. The window is not as wide open as you think pretty much is what I was saying. And obviously it was a little more dramatic with it and it kind of upset you. And I'm sorry, you know, deeply apologize. Well, well that first but year, like, the first yeah. year they didn't, it the was a mess. It was a wash. Yeah. Well, there's didn't no Kevin Durant. Year. You, they, you knew yeah. they were losing. They wasn't yeah, an expectation yeah. to win. No chance. Yeah. 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 Last year is when it started counting, but you know, so 
It is what it is. I mean, been, this year, you've what, been I'm so annoying, annoying on Twitter. So <laughs> annoying with like the Kevin, the, the stuff. And I had to explain to people like he's just being an asshole. Don't fall for it in the night. Which one? Which point? People, which point? Just when you have to like making the point that Kevin Durant had a bad playoff. Or like, oh, because he shot enough. the air ball at the air ball. I'm at the like, end. guys, don't take that seriously. The guy had an all time performance and played course, every single minute but... and did everything he could imaginable. I mean, the guy was mm -hmm. he was by himself playing story. the champions, played, the future was, champions. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I know the, the debate talk shows during the time was, is he better than Larry Bird? Is he eclipsed Larry Bird? Is Kevin Durant mm -hmm. better than Larry Bird? So don't take it. Larry Bird's really good. Yeah. I mean, and if yeah. talk shows are making that comparison. I would don't take Alex's tweet, and I did about the damn air ball too seriously. I forgot. I forgot the. I had been so long since I saw that play in my head. I thought he brought it up. He brought it up on like a fast break. I forgot it was in the half court. Yeah, he reminded me. over a guy a foot shorter. No, I'm just kidding. No, but it, it's had no it's, legs. Yeah, no, he was done. He was done. He played too many minutes, but. It's just that's all in fun, man, because he's taking shots at each other. I mean, the Nets fans have been taking shots at the Knicks fans. It's not you personally. It's like the group of Nets fans. And you know who they are on Twitter, that they are the guys that they'll never admit to anything like you'll admit like, oh, Kyrie should, you know, do what's right to get on the team. But they'll just keep twisting their way into doing everything possible to make it a homer take and this and that. And like it, that's the kind of people where three years ago we're we're trashing the knicks and you know what they deserve the, to get trolled they deserve to take get shots you know because you deserve this because their perfect perception is done and that's why we're giving it back to you now don't dish it out if you can't take it it's just as simple as that it just I, it was weird because i never thought of the nets of having a perfect perception nationally all i cared about was oh come on win. yeah I, of I course they did i, I not did. you but I, oh I, everybody I Look I, at this know, perfect organization. This is how you do it. This is how everything should be done. And look at how great they are. And they changed the culture. They didn't have draft picks. It's amazing. They are, you know, come on. It was nonstop. Maybe I heard it more because it annoyed me. And you were just like, wow, this is great. Nets are great. Like, this is awesome. Well, you know, for my kind of end, thing. I never saw yeah. the Nets have any attention nationally. So it was pretty cool to hear that. And hear just see them on TV. Yeah. You know, and I can't yeah. explain to you why national people hate the Knicks or got on the Knicks. I can mm -hmm. tell you from my end, there's an arrogance with the fan base and they think they're the, the Nick fan base. And I uh, believes in their heart that they're better than everybody else. And there's probably some of that that irritates people. And I, I, I yeah. think at its core, there's something about that. The Nick, well, fan you always say it. It's that, Yankee fans without the championships is the Nick fan. You took what you a said. Yankee fan and a Met fan and made love. And you're like, this is what we got. Oh my God. <laughs> this is disgusting. That's what it is. It's the Yankee, oh, it's the Yankee God. fan arrogance with the Mets with the Mets kind of reputation. And it's disgusting. But that's, that's, but that's true, what that's it is true. because they were the only team in the area. So that makes sense. And then here come the Nets. The little old engine they could. The Nets. Oh, throwing a cute. billboard up they're and, cute. This, yeah. and then it, but it, but it was it, it, from my end, it was it was this is the core always, of the podcast. Yeah. But it's like let's mm. let's move the sticks. Let's move the goalposts. The Nets will come to Brooklyn. They'll never overtake the Knicks. They'll never be as big as the Knicks. The Nets will never get free agents. It's impossible. To Knicks town, none of those free agents will come. Okay, they can, but the only reason that they came was Kevin Durant was hurt, and he wouldn't have done it if he didn't. If he wasn't hurt, if he wasn't hurt, of course he'd be a Nick. Of course he'd be a Nick. Of course he'd be there. Well, yeah, they he, told us he was going to be a Nick until he got hurt. So I don't know what you want us to not believe that. I mean, well, was, you, just told me the national, you just told me the national. Every reporter was, was saying and that. Now you're saying that they're viable. Make up your mind on it. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, who like who are you supposed to believe then? I mean, you get reputable reporters that are telling you, and then you have other other reputable, like non-reputable reporters that are on TV that are trashing the Knicks nonstop. There's more than one reporter. You know what I'm saying? Like there are people I that you. I like I that you, are reporters that say that you trust their credibility. Even people that hate the Knicks that were saying Durant was coming to the Knicks, right? And he <laughs> didn't. Still, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, he, so didn't, he didn't. He didn't go. All right. So now it was okay. They'll go. He'll go to the Knicks. But Kevin Durant's not resigning. You think he wants to be there? He's a mercenary. Then he resigns. It's just always something new to find to move it, move it, move it, move it. And that's what annoys me. At some point, deep down inside, and Nick fans, you know it, deep, 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 deep down inside, you are taking joy out of the Nets bad day because you know part of your territory was taken. So that's why you're having a celebration because your whole island has been invaded and you don't have it all anymore and you have to share it. And that's why you get so much joy. When there's a bad day for the Nets because you care about them. They're your rival and they're a pain in the ass to you. I admit that. I admit they're rivals. I admit they're here. I admit they're relevant. And that's why I got excited. 
Well, that's <laughs> you why know, at, least, a, at least, at uh, least I'm you honest. Admit it. You're honest. <laughs> yeah, I'm honest. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's been people. I'm in touch just, with myself, Mike. I, I know, I know how who I am as a person. Uh, I'm an adult, and I understand. I can look myself in the mirror, and this is who I am as a person. And I understand. I hate the Nets. I hope they lose. I hope you know everything falls apart. And I, I know that they've arrived, but, you know, and I also say all the time, we'll see if they actually have fully, fully arrived. If when all these guys are gone and they go back to being a regular team, if they still have the attention that they're getting now, that's the, the Knicks get the attention, whether well, the Knicks get the attention, whether they're good or bad. It's not a new one. It's the truth. That's the new, well, that's the new one. That's the new. We've gotten to the part where the net, Nets are now relevant. So when they, they leave, are, they'll be irrelevant. But I'm saying that's the new. No, I'm that's not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying the we'll see one. if they are. It's not a new one. We'll the see if one. they are because. It's, it's true. Is that not true? You've agreed with that point on this podcast before that I brought it up that we'll see if they actually have arrived and they actually have real fans. If when these guys are gone and retired or washed up, if they're still big, loud net fans or they just go back into the bushes like Homer Simpson. You know what I'm I saying? Like, it's like I, I can't see. I don't I think any time a franchise has this level of talent, it will be louder. But I do of think course, they've had but an the Knicks are bad on... and they're still loud. You know what yeah, I mean? Well, That's yeah, what I'm I saying. Know. I get it. Yeah. They're the best. Yeah. They're the best. They're loud. That's they not the noise. best. I'm saying they're it's like so real great. loyal fans. That's what I'm no, they're saying. Lo- like, they're, lo- they're loyal fans. And I, but, but that's that that comes back to the whole part of the organic growth, right? Like, okay, Kevin Durant missed that shot. I've had this conversation with Nick fans on Twitter. They'll be like, oh, it took them to the second round for their fans to get noisy. Like, I can't believe oh, that's that. Stupid. I'll say, that's stupid. And I'll stupid. say, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Question insert Knicks fan. When did what when, when did you grow up? What made you love the Knicks? Man, that LJ four point play. When I saw that play, I knew I was just gonna be a Knicks fan for life. How old were you? Oh, I was nine. Okay. Hey, nine year old net fan. When you saw that play with Kevin Durant when he made that shot, you fell in love. It's the same idea. And now right. that they're in Brooklyn, yeah. they, they have that as an option. So you're right. We'll see what happens, but it does feel like let's just keep moving to find another way to minimize the growth that has occurred. And that ultimately this conversation, only time will tell what will happen. But it does feel like from my end, it's the new one because things were going well. It's not really. I mean, I, I, I can't give you that. I'm sorry. But I think to defend you and the Nets fans, like when you have that great of a team or just a good team in general, let's talk about the Knicks in the 90s. Uh, insert whatever team they beat up in the first round. You weren't as into the first round, especially the five game series. You're winning it in three or in four, and that's it, and it's over. The crowd is not bouncing off the walls. I mean, they, they're into it, of course, but it wasn't as loud as it got to the second round when you get to the uh to to playing the Bulls or the Pacers or the Heat or whoever in the second or third round. That's when it really, really got intense. You don't remember the first round matchup. <laughs> You know, all the memories are about the four point play, which is the conference finals about Reggie Miller, which is in the semis or the final conference finals. You know, you don't remember what happened in the first round unless they lost, you know, to the the Raptors or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the point. Hey, guys, glad that you did get to hear that conversation that we did have before the Kyrie Irving Instagram live. But it just lots of yelling. it it still gets to the feelings (laughs) and and the emotions of where we are uh, as fans of both teams in the New York metropolitan area. With that, there was a team that used to play in New Jersey. My love for the New Jersey Nets, the starting shooting guard on the team that went to -to back-to-back NBA finals and swept the Knicks in four in 2004. That guard was Kerry Kittles, eight-year NBA vet. Excited to have him on for the first time, Bad Weather fans, as we have a great time talking Nets, Knicks, and some of his favorite memories from the NBA. Here's Kerry Kittles. All right, and as promised, Bad Weather Fans Podcast, we're joined right now with eight-year NBA veteran, Carrie Kittles, who is on my favorite New Jersey Nets team of all time, the 2001-2002 Nets. Now, I love the next year, but I think for me, growing up a Nets fan, seeing that first season in 01-02, uh, I'll, just, I'll be completely honest with you, Carrie. It was, it was special. It was amazing. So it's, it's, it's a true honor to have you on the podcast. We appreciate it. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Those yeah, no, for coming on. Those are some really good times. Thank you. <laughs> they were. Okay, so I haven't told Alex this, the Nick fan here, but there's there's a memory yeah. I have specifically. It was Nets versus Knicks at Continental Airlines Arena, okay? And it was the first time the Knicks came to Continental. And there's one play where Kid, Jason Kidd throws the ball off the backboard. Kenyon dunks it. And I remember, you know, being around all these annoying Nick fans. And it was at that moment <laughs> I looked around and I was like, this team is is different. They are for real. What was it like from your perspective? A, do you remember that? Or I'm just going nuts here. And then two, when you realize you're like, this this team's a little different and we've got something special here. 
Oh, yeah. No, I remember that play vividly. You know, I, I remember uh, Jason. Every time he threw an alley-oop to Kenyon, he would always jump while the ball is in the air. And it's like um, his expression, um, you know, of Kenyon's crazy athleticism. But, you know, I, I, that team was a special team to be a part of. I think there were so many new faces. I was coming back from injury uh, that year. Um, Jason Kidd was his first year with the Nets. You know, we brought in Todd McCutton. We had a lot of new faces. Richard Jefferson, those guys were all rookies. And so there were zero expectations because a year prior to that, we were terrible. And um, but we came together. And honestly, it was the first day of training camp. Mm. It was the first day of training camp where we all looked around and we were like, oh, my gosh, we have we have a lot of really good pieces. And just the chemistry from day one of like everyone on that team, all in one page, all on the same page, all bought into winning and, 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 and playing for each other which was our common theme. We're going to play for each other. Um, really is special for, for, for basketball players at that level to all be all in for the team and not really think about themselves. And so um, to know on, night, on a night-to-night -night basis that you have a chance of dominating the other team, you're probably going to win most of your games. That's a great feeling to have because you said 82 games is a long season. But when you're that good, it makes it that much more special. For sure, for sure. I don't know if you know this. We had uh, your boy Richard Jefferson on the podcast on uh, episode six, if anybody wants to listen. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, was he this much of a pain in the ass as a friend and a teammate? Yes, yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> He's great. He, he always takes jabs at me on Twitter. It's pretty funny. And uh, also, uh, he mentioned on the interview with us that in uh, 2004, when you guys swept the Knicks, you know, I tried a series I try to forget uh that you guys love that you it, it was a lot of joy for him was it really did it feel like more than a first round sweep beating no, us, it, it, us it, as the Knicks? it, it really <laughs> did because when you're playing for the nets you're in the Knicks shadows let's be honest mm. i mean the yeah. media coverage for the for the knicks just dwarfs what we always had in new jersey and then so then we come off two years where we had so much success but yet you're always still hearing about the knicks it's just right. the way it is it's just the, the media is just you know they're in new york we're in jersey so we get that so whenever we had a chance to prove to them, you know, that we were the better team, you know, that was always fun. And then if you remember back in that series, there was some jazz between Kmart and, and Tim Thomas, and it was all that going on, which had a little bit of drama involved, but we were just that much better than them. So it was nice to be able to sweep them and send them home. That's interesting to hear because now, you know, with the Nets moving to Brooklyn, it feels the and I always said this. I still think the Knicks are the king of the city, but they're deaf. I look at it like the Nets entered the Knicks um, sandbox and they took some of their toys. And the Knicks fans are now a little bit upset, and the media coverage has changed. From your Perfect. perspective, have have you seen what have you seen with this shift of the Nets now in Brooklyn and kind of taking some of that real estate? I agree with you. So, you know, coming in their sandbox is a great is a great analogy, great metaphor. So, um, yeah, I, I think being that close being that much closer now to the Knicks fans, some of their fans really were, now they're in Brooklyn and they're in Queens and they're not going to go to New York to watch a game. They're going to go to Brooklyn to watch the team play. It's, it's to me, it's a, the arena is just a better arena. And quite frankly, it's a, it's a better night out. And now you have a very, very competitive team with superstars <laughs> that are just fun yeah. to watch. I mean, if you don't want to watch Kyrie Irving play and Kevin Durant play and James Harden, something's wrong. With you. And so, um, they have definitely st stolen some of the Knicks' thunder uh, as of late. And if they could really win and, and advance, get to the finals, possibly win a championship, you know, I, I think they'll take over. They'll, they'll have to, the Knicks fans will have to give them the crown and say, guess what? We're crowning you the basketball. And it's going to hurt the Knicks fans to really have to own that because they just hate. It doesn't matter what the Nets do. They have to win a championship, right, in order for them to do that. But then if they do... They're going to have to really hand them the keys to the city, and it's going to be a, a great day for Nets fans. <laughs> yeah, no, it wouldn't be a great day for me, that's for sure. No, I get but, it. <laughs> uh, you know, with a healthy big three, it was obvious that, to me too, that the Nets were the, the foregone conclusion to win the finals and stuff like that. But with the Kyrie situation going on, do you and it kind of brings it back to the pack a little bit, do you think that they're still favorites to get to the finals and ultimately win it all with, without Kyrie if he doesn't play? Uh, if he doesn't play, I, I would say, I, I don't know if the... the, the uh, the, the favorite coming out the out the east. I I, I think Milwaukee still is a formidable opponent. Mm -hmm. I think that you know with everyone coming back pretty much right except uh, PJ, you know they have Divincenzo's coming back, so I, they're going to be the favorites probably. I think 
without Kyrie in the lineup. And, you know, it's unfortunate that they have to deal with this, but I think the Nets make are making a clear decision right now. We don't really want to have this distraction. Let's mm-hmm. try to end this now. If we don't take a firm stance, this is going to linger and hurt our chances. So let's put our foot foot down now. And so I, I kind of respect that um, from, from leadership. So, but yeah, I, I think if the Nets are healthy, even if, if it's just Durant, Harden, and, and the rest of the crew, excluding Kyrie, they're going to be a tough out. And I, I, you know, Milwaukee may be the favorite, but they ain't going to want to play the Brooklyn Nets with, with those two guys healthy. From a chemistry standpoint, how difficult would it have been <clears throat> for the Nets and thinking back on your career if one of the leaders of the team and the and superstars in the team was only there for half the time? From a continuity standpoint and getting a rhythm standpoint, how difficult do you think that would have been for the players in the locker room? I, I think in my era, we were uh, probably just in general, the NBA, most teams were just older, more mature teams. And, you know, our, our, our teams with the Nets, we were a, a very mature group uh, for the most part, except for Richard. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so I, I think similar to how I, w- I would like to think at least similar to how Michael Jordan handled the adversity with the Bulls, as we saw in that documentary, right? You know, he had to deal with Robin. He had to deal with the issue with Pippen, right? He had to deal with, and, and all teams have to deal with adversity. But when it comes from teammates who are making decisions, right, that could potentially get be distractions to the teams and, and with their purpose and what they're trying to accomplish, I, I think that we would have the maturity to, to move past it and and not let it kind of distract us as much right but uh it's easier said than done right because i think what we're seeing now from the nets is this has been a dist- he was a distraction last year because he was taking time off and there wasn't great communication from both sides and there was a lot of ambiguity around why he was being out so now they're doing it's, 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 it's reoccurring and so i, I think now it, it's it's something that the nets, nets don't want to deal with so i don't know that makes sense. And as somebody who uh, went through your uh, major knee injury and missed the full season, do you find it amazing how great? Sorry to bring that up. Do you know? Do you, do you find it amazing how great uh, Durant has looked post injury? I know it was a different injury, but do you find it amazing how uh, well he's looked? I, I I was shocked to see, I was shocked to see him uh, perform at that level. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, we're we're talking about a guy who missed the season, came back and played, which I did. I was healthy. I played. I did well. Right. We. We went to the finals that year. I was out. The year after I was out. But he comes back, and then now everyone's saying he's the best player in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about that. He's not only back back, but he is the best. He's everyone's MVP, really. Like It's like if you had a choice, who would you pick, Giannis or Kevin Durant? You know, LeBron or Kevin Like It's Kevin Durant. It is. And so, I mean, wow, it goes to show you how talented he is, how committed he is, how much he loves the game and loves the sport. The work ethic to be able to, I know what it takes to be able to get back to, to yeah. take your body from being one place. We'll see what happens with Clay Thompson in Golden State. Mm-hmm. He's out a whole season. You know, is he, will he be able to re, you know, regain his form and where, and where he was performing prior to his injury? So, remarkable season he had last year. I'm looking forward to watching him play this year. He did well. I mean, gosh, he carried the Olympic team in the, in the I mean, he went, not only did he come back and play and do well in the, in the postseason, and I mean, 47, 49 points, and then he goes to the Olympics and carries us to gold medal. It's like this guy is he's an incredible basketball he's player. Ball all the time. Ball, ball, ball. <laughs> he loves it. And when you hear him talk, what does he always say? I just it's all about hooping. Mm. All he cares about is it's just hooping. And, and, and that's great. I'm I'm curious, Carrie, from your perspective, and you mentioned this earlier. Uh, when you're playing in Jersey, had the two teams that went to back-to-back NBA finals. And I think this is where I have a chip on my shoulder, and it's why Nick fans just get on my nerves so much in this arrogance. Was it ever frustrating from your point? You're like, we've got this incredible show here where we've got an MVP, and Jason Kidd should have been the MVP that year and not Tim Duncan. He's We're, we're running up and down the court. We're throwing the ball off, off the backboard. He's kicking out to you for threes. Incredible defense. Was it frustrating to to then be like, hey, wh- why are we not getting the same kind of coverage right now? Yeah, it, it was frustrating. Uh, I, you know, looking back on that on those years um, playing in the Meadowlands, uh, you know, it was an older arena, and it, it just wasn't a lot. It was a it was 
very family oriented. It wasn't a young, you know, I mean, gosh, you go to the Barclays Center now, it's like, wow. <laughs> I mean, everyone's in their 20s. Yeah. <laughs> everyone's in their 20s. It's like dark in there. Like they like the garden, like you're in the theaters. It's, it's so it's, it's a dip, different atmosphere. Um, and yeah, we, we thought at that time we definitely needed more, more shine, right? We thought that we could have been promoted as one of those teams across the NBA. That's really funny. I mean, we're playing today's style. That was, you know, 15 years ago. So, um, yeah, I know it, it, it's interesting now to be able to see how the game is being played and, 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 and what they're promoting. And we look back on those years. I mean, we, we did it all. We, we were exciting in the open court. You know, we had athletic players, this exciting superstar in J-Kid. And, um, you know, it was unfortunate we didn't win a championship. Yeah. Um, so how much did it hurt when you saw Kenyon and Kid play for the Knicks in 2013? <laughs> and that <laughs> success. Did that hurt a little bit? That, a little that, bit. That hurt. That hurt, man. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, I, I was and They happy were good, for too. <laughs> they were really good. I mean, I yeah. was, I mean, looking back, right? I mean, they haven't had a season like that in a long time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that was interesting to see those guys actually in the, in the, in those colors. I don't like to think about that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I wish it never happened. Yeah, I send that pick to Mike a lot, a pick of them too in Nick's Drives me nuts. Ouch. Drives me nuts. And you said you said before, you know, the Nets were playing a brand of basketball in 2001, 2002, more spread out, fast break, hit shooting the threes. And I was so I was at the Nets Knicks game in the garden. It was like 2002, and I remember this game specifically because the Nets that day hit 14 three-point shots. And at the time, they were like, oh, my goodness, 14 three-point shots. This is unbelievable. This is so many. Now you see 14 three-point shots. I mean, and not no joke, like in eight minutes. H- have you ever thought what it would be like for you to play in this crazy NBA, especially as a, as a, as a great three-point shooter like yourself? That's funny you mentioned, you mentioned that because I was in my driveway yesterday with my nine-year-old son, and we were just shooting around. And uh, I was just telling him, I'm like, th- this – this game it definitely suits my style of play as, as a player. I mean, I was an open court player. Uh, I, I love to play in space because I wasn't, you know, big broody, you know, brood strong guy. So, um, and then the threes, I mean, goodness, everyone I talk to now in the NBA, they're trying to get their players to take more threes. So yeah, like Brooke think, Lopez is shooting threes now like crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's incredible how, how it's uh, how the game has changed. It, you know, obviously the analytics are telling everyone ha- has proven that the value of the three, take even just taking the three is that much more important than taking the two. Unless you are, it's a for sure two. That means it has to be a dunk or an easy layup. If it's a contested layup, they really don't want you taking a contested layup. Um, they want you to kick it out for a three. So. I mean, this style of play, I mean, I just shake my head. I just, I'm, I tell the guys, never I'm around the guys to currently play. I tell those guys, you, you are so fortunate. Be, be, appreciate this because, I mean, man, you have it good. You have yeah. it really. Scotty Brooks told Bradley Bill that he wanted him to take a few years ago. He wanted him to take 23s in a game. And he was trying his best to get Bradley Bill to take, to attempt 23s. And he couldn't get him to do it. <laughs> the most you can get was like 15 or whatever it was. And I was just like shaking my head going, I, I don't even understand this, really. It, it's just beyond comprehension. It makes you feel like you can come back and come and suit it up and play a couple games, hit some threes. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, it's, uh, it's what the league is all about now. So I wish there was more balance as a former player. I got to be honest sure. with you. I wish there was more balance between the art of the game, like seeing more, De- more of DeMar DeRozan style of play mm-hmm. and, and others who u- really utilize the mid-range, and you know, there's no post-up, so we're not going to see guys back to the baskets. But the mid-range shot was a shot that was, I, I think, I mean, guys, Michael Jordan, Rip Hamilton, I mean, there's so many great players that really utilize that art. Uh, your your Nick player, Latrell Sprewell in the garden. I mean, guys, yeah. that's Latrell Sprewell and, and Alan Hughes. Adam shot threes as well, but I mean, those guys killed you in the mid range, mm. and it was a beautiful thing to watch because you just couldn't defend it, mm-hmm. and you couldn't scout against it. It was it was really it, it was a beautiful part of the game that's just pretty much gone. Yeah, it's, the it's, fast it's break almost, pull up jumper is is dead. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, nobody you, does it. You better get behind that three point line and, and take a shot from back there. So, <laughs> go ahead, Mike. Who who was uh, in your playing day? Uh, cause you did a great job on the perimeter defensively. Who, who, who was the biggest pain in the butt to guard? 
So I get I get asked this question a lot. You know, who's the toughest guy? Got all this stuff. So right, and I was I, you know obviously every era have their superstars, right? And then when you were a shooting guard like I was, obviously you guard the Jordans and you guarded um, Reggie Miller and those guys, Mitch Richmond. I mean, the list goes on. Ray Allen was no <laughs> so, <Kobe>. but <laughs> but I would say yeah, I was just I was going to go Kobe Bryant. Um, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, of all those great players, of Paul Pierce and all those guys who were great players, he was just that much more exceptional of a talent. I, I, I think he, he had no weaknesses, um, and he was tenacious. He wanted to score on you every possession. And I tell the story guarding Kobe. I was guarding him one time, and, and he took a shot, and he missed a shot. And he's calling for the ball. They, they get the offensive rebound, and he's calling for the ball as if he just never took the, the previous shot. He's like, yo, yo, yo. I said, bro, you just took a shot. And he looked at me. He's like, he's like, whatever. Give me the ball. And it's like he just wanted to score on you every single chance he got. He was trying to attack you. And, and uh, but, but, but he was really, really skilled. He, he was super, super skilled. And, and, and that's what made him such a tough cover. Was he a trash talker, a big trash talker, or was it just kind never, of mental? Yeah, yeah, mental. Never talk trash. Uh, the biggest talkers were the guys in Boston. Uh, you know, I, I think Kevin Garnett. For the, I never played it, you know, directly against him, but Garnett was was he had a mouthpiece on him, and and Gary Payton he had a mouthpiece on him. But I would say Paul Pierce and, and, and Antoine Walker, those guys up in Boston, dude, in those play, they they were mouthy. <laughs> You didn't like the shimmy, but no shimmy for you. Oh, I hated the shimmy, Kerry. Oh, I, 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 oh. uh, yeah, I, you know, people talk about the Knicks all the time because they're right there across the river. But for me, just playing against the Celtics up there those years in the playoffs, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, you you could have those guys. Yeah, and that that those Celtics series, especially in the 2002 playoffs, you know, I'll I'll fanboy out here. I don't care. I'll just do it. The pass you had to KVH for three that put the Nets up six. Uh, I, I'll I'll never forget that. I mean, that's the shot got the Nets basically to the finals, and one second on the on the clock, kicking it out there. I mean, it must have just been kind of surreal in the moment. You got twenty thousand people wanting you to fail and to make that to make that pass, and then Van Horn swishing the three. Uh, just you know, I I I think about it. It was it was, it was magic. That was a, that was a great play, and 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 uh, I remember playing in Boston when we, when we give up that big lead. I'm sure as a Nets fan, you remember that game when we lost there. We were up 25 yes. points. They stormed back. They win the game. They're celebrating. They're thinking the series is over. We we got these guys now. We're all in their heads. We have a team meeting the next morning. Rod Thorn gives an inspirational speech to the group. Just re reaffirms that we know we're the better team. What, what happened last night was a fluke. You're going to go out there next next game and you're going to destroy them. And sure enough, we go out the next game, I don't know, game five or six up there. We just destroy them and just take the win out of them. And the series is over. So, yeah, those are some good memories we look back on and, and, and playing some really competitive series. Yeah. And, and then curious because, you know, the leader of the group there with, with Jay Kidd. Uh, did you did you know then or think that he would have an inkling to want to be a head coach and get involved in that direction? No, really? no, no, not at all. I, I would say Jason was a quiet leader. He was a leader by example. He wasn't super, super vocal. Um, and so when it was like Jason Kidd's going to coach the Nets, I was like, wow, I'm like, this is going to be interesting, you know, because I thought that he just, I mean, we, he obviously has an incredible IQ. I mean, he saw things on the court two or three plays before they happened. I mean, he knew where guys were, but he, but he just, it just wasn't verbal. He just wasn't speaking it. And so even in huddles and things like that, he was just he was going to go out there and just do it with his play. And we all just going to follow. Right. That's the kind of leader he was. But um, now you're seeing him as a as a as a basketball you know, player now. And so this changing to this role as a coach, having to having to adapt and be able to communicate all of those 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 genius thoughts he had as a player now communicating that to the to the team. And hopefully now he's having his second chance. Or third chance, or rather, with the uh, with the Mavs. Hopefully, this is a home run for him. Yeah, no, I mean, with the Mavs, I'm not really a big fan because of the Porzingis stuff and everything like that. They have, they have like every ex Nick, especially even kid ex Nick, 
It's kind of funny every player me. that leaves, every player that leaves New York, you have an issue with them. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do, I do. But um, no, I mean, uh, so it's just interesting with Jason Kidd in, in Dallas. You think that they're going to have a good a good chance to uh to to be better with him as a coach, or you know, not a lot of coaches get three chances. So it's interesting that he did. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, obviously he when he played there and they won that championship with Dirk and mm-hmm. and and he spent time in getting to know Cuban. There must have been some kind of connection there, I, I think. And then, um, you know, I, I, I would say that it probably helped when the guy that's that's leaving the the the, the head coaching job recommends a, a, a former player. Uh, when we call out, basically say they should hire J.K. because he thinks that that would be a good match for Luca Doncic. I, I think. Um, that was smart. And I, I, you know, listen, we all grow and we all learn things as, as we get older. And Jason is, says a lot of very good things publicly about his experience coaching and, and what he's now learned from, from being an assistant coach um, with the Lakers. And so, yeah, I, I think, I think he'll do well. Well, Kerry, this has been, been a lot of fun. Really appreciate you coming on. You know, I could, I could really just annoy Alex and we could go back on all these memory, <laughs> memory trips. Um, I'll, I'll leave you with this one, and, and then we'll roll. But uh, game five, Pacers, Reggie Miller hits the shot, which we now know afterwards with, with instant replay was actually 0.1 seconds late. But I'll never forget oh, wow. when Reggie – I didn't know when, that. Yeah, when, when, then that, that's what changed actually the institute in some of the replay. Um, when he hits that shot, I'm sitting in my seat. I fall to the side, hit my eye on the corner of the seat. <laughs> Obviously, the Nets go to win in, in double overtime, but – but I was there uh, with some of those amazing memories that, you know, you that, 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 that Reggie Miller <laughs> game was, was, I mean, mm. did he go back in time that night or what as a mm. player? I could tell you trying to guard him. I think he was 38, 39, whatever he was. Dude, <laughs> he was the, I mean, have you ever seen Reggie Miller shock and blocked? I mean, I, I, I can't even really, he was six, seven. So he had me about two inches and, you know, I, I have really long arms. And so guys will always complain in the league, but they hated my arms because I was always distracting them. But Reggie, it was like that night, I'm like, who is this guy? I mean, I mean, obviously we know who he is, but it's like, yeah. we didn't. I didn't expect this guy to be that hot and to make those clutch plays. Then he drives down the lane and dunks the ball over like two people at 38, 39, whatever he was. It was, I mean, to me, it's, it speaks to, the, when they say like superstars and like, you know, with guys that are just that elite, right? You have NBA players, you have guys that are perennial all-stars, and then you have Hall of Famers, right? That's the difference. NBA players, perennial all-stars, they're amazing. Guys that make the all-stars team every year, they're good. And then you have Hall of Famers. They're in an elite group. And the Kobe's, the Reggie's, the MJ's, the Iverson. I mean, gee, I can go to Iverson stories. We can, I can go all day on him. <laughs> they're just elite. And when you play against those guys on the court, you know, you know, you, the fans don't really know. They say, oh, he's good, whatever. Ray Allen, oh, he's good. But I'm telling you, when you play against the Hall of Famers, they're special for a reason. They distinguish themselves from everybody else for a reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's well, crazy. Can, yeah, go ahead. I would just say it's crazy because, I, I, you know, everybody in the NBA is incredible. It's, 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 and I don't think the average fan understands how good – NBA players are because, you know, like I'll go in my driveway, I don't hit a 15 footer and think I'm <laughs> a, the best player in the world, but I don't think the regular person understands it. And then when there's a, just another level of player, it really just shows how unbelievably gifted some players are to get to that level is just truly incredible. Like you're saying. I, 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 yes. You play against Alfred Payton at, at, at uh, a gym in New York city and Alfred Payton would destroy you. 21 like, nothing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then you're like, ah, oh, right. And then you, you watch him play. And even Drew Holiday, who's a perennial all-star, Drew, he, now NBA champion, gold medal, right? He's, he's a great player. But you put him next to Kyrie Irving and you're like, uh, uh. Yeah. You, you see you those see, videos of, yeah, yeah. You see the difference right away. You, you mm-hmm. notice like, wow, this is what elite looks like. So, I, I mean, I'm a fan now. I've been a fan since I retired. And I, I, I watch these guys, and I know I can tell every level where these guys are in their careers. I can see the growth. I saw the growth in Giannis when he first came in to being right. Remember when he first came in? Mm-hmm. Anthony, Davis was, yeah. and Anthony Davis was a better player, and then he caught him. 
And there was all this talk between who's better, who would you take, Giannis or AD? And now two-time MVP, NBA champion, people probably will pick Giannis. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of fans across the NBA will pick Giannis over AD. So you see this growth in certain players as a fan now. I can appreciate it because I know it takes a lot of hard work, right, to push through to, to get that much better when you are already an elite player. And, um, you know, so I, I just, I'm just a total fan now. I, I'm obviously a Nets fan. I, I just follow the team. Uh, I'm encouraged by what I've been watching the last few years. And, um, you know, I'm excited for this season, upcoming season. Yeah, it's going to be a fun New York basketball season for sure. You know, Knicks yes. getting good is, is really fun, you know? Knicks, Knicks, Knicks have definitely improved. And, and as, as a Knicks fan, I'm sure you're excited to see Very. Yeah. <laughs> to see this year, and they're going to be – now the bar is raised, right? There's no more going back for Knicks fans. So you can't look back on all the, the D'Antoni days and all the Phil Jackson days. This is a whole new team now with Tibbs. And what he's done with the group last year, I mean, wow. And now some – Nobody some, saw some, it coming, yeah. <laughs> no one saw it coming, and you pick up a couple of key players and you get a healthy Mitch, Mitchell Robinson back to, to, to solidify the paint. You know, we'll see what happens. Never know. You never know. They don't want to play Brooklyn, excited. though. They don't want to play Brooklyn, though. But it's, <laughs> they should do well. They'll, they'll do well. They'll compete. But they don't want to do – they can't beat the Nets. My, yeah, no, I don't think so either in a playoff series. My dream is to get the Knicks and Nets in a playoff series and Knicks to steal game one and then come on this podcast with Mike freaking out after a game. <laughs> Just give me that moment, and that'll be great. I'll be, I'll be okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, Kerry, thank you so much for coming on Bad Weather Fans. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Anytime, guys. I appreciate it. All right, thank you, Kerry Kittles, for coming on Bad Weather Fans. Really yeah. enjoyed hearing some of those awesome stories, talking about defending Kobe Bryant, talking about those Nets teams, and then getting his take on the rivalry, Nets-Knicks, which is always evolving and changing literally every second, even live during the Bad Weather Fans podcast. All right, every week, Alex, we have, check this out, it is our fantasy football league that we do. It's a daily fantasy football league. The winner of that, gets to come on Bad Weather fans and talk about their love of their team, if it's the Nets or Knicks. This week, I won again, but by default, second place gets to come on the podcast. So uh, this is yeah, Bootalicious. Is that it. what we're talking to? Bootalicious? At Bootalicious on Twitter, yes. yes so here yes. is a, He's a good super, dude. Super, according to Alex, we'll find out. Here is a, a good dude, Bootalicious. All right, it's Bad Weather fans, and as we do every week here now on the podcast, the winner of the FanDuel League gets to join us on Bad Weather fans. So, Alex, Bootalicious, since I won again, this is number two for me in the four times that we've done it. I'm ready for my interview. Fire away. Any questions you want to ask me about the Nets, I'm ready to go. Happy to be here. Nobody cares what you have to say. That's all right. No. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Mike. Uh, I mean, Bootalicious. I'm sorry. At Bootalicious. Uh, you know, appreciate you having coming on. Um, we interact on Twitter all the time. He's a great follow for anybody who wants to follow him on Twitter at Bootalicious. Uh, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, how'd you become a Knicks fan? Things like that. So I'm a proud Jersey Shore guy. And of course, every time I bring this up, pump? Like, uh, eh, not really the fist pump. You know, we get a back rap <laughs> on the show. But you know, every time <laughs> I tell people I'm from the Jersey Shore and I say I'm a Knicks fan, they're like, you know, how come you didn't grow up a Nets fan? I, you know, I always tell them my dad grew up in Staten Island. He watched Walt Frazier, Willis Reed. I was raised watching the Knicks, you know, from the time I was five years old. I had TV with MSG in my room when I was six years old. I was the first kid that had cable TV in the room in my elementary school, man. So I just grew up watching the Knicks, Starks, Ewing, Oakley, you know, Harper, all those guys. And, you know, it just stuck. It's like a, a religion for me. I mean, my room was wallpaper, New York Knicks wallpaper growing up. And I had a Knicks locker with uh, 33 and Ewing's name under it. I mean, it's just a religion for me, basically. I've just always wow. been a fan. Uh, that's what is cool about this area. And I think people really, you know, gravitate towards basketball. It is, I've always said, I think uh, people would disagree with me, but I do think it's the number one sport in the area. And I do think it's a lot of it's from the, in the old days, not anymore, but, but only having one team in New York that people rooted and cared for. I think Bonded, it created yeah. this, you yeah. know, I, this ideology of Nick fans that are just so into it. And there was only one team, which was very different than Giants, Mets, mm -hmm. and even on the hockey side with the three teams and the different passion there where the Nets were the clear number two. It really created uh, just this phenomena of people falling in love with the Knicks. Yeah. And I think there's a lot to do with the tenacity of those teams. You know, they were physical, they were tough. Nobody wanted to go into New York and play the Knicks. And 
it was just a team that New York really rallied behind. So, uh, yeah, that's why I'm a diehard Nick fan. I'll always be a Nick fan. As you should. You Don't change. Yeah, there you That'd go. be bad. I'd be against Don't that. Change. You can't change. Don't change. Never will. No, you can't. So show us your jersey. What jersey are you wearing? You're rocking I'm, a jersey I'm, on YouTube. If you I'm see. wearing the, uh, the Amari Stoudemire jersey because I was saying, you know, the Knicks are back. And that's Amari kind of coined that phrase. And I really feel like this year this team is capable of special things. The togetherness, having a great coach, good young talent. Uh, I just – I have a lot of optimism for this season. And, and it's not a se- it's not something like I've routinely had optimism for the last few years. It's this year in particular that I have optimism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. We, yeah, go ahead, Alex. Go ahead. You, you continue, continue on the Nick Love Fest. I'll let you. I'll let you. No, I was saying I agree. I mean, last year I was a little down because I think they could have done more. Like bringing Alfred back kind of pissed me off, and it bit them in the you know in the ass. But uh, this year it seems like everybody's clicking on on you know on I don't know what the expression is, but everybody's just clicking and everybody's on the same page. Also, yeah, there you go. Well, well you. that was like night. that was like a Derrick Rose lob to Obi Toppin. Such good chemistry. There it Alec was. Burks, he usually. set it up. That was that was <laughs> tremendous. And here's the net fan who couldn't, you know, couldn't defend it. That was awesome. Yeah, no, exactly. And you know, it, it's just we're all on the same page. All the, the players on the same page. The coaches are on the same players. Everybody's bought in. Everybody likes each other for now. No, they haven't lost the game yet, obviously. But this is just feels something. Something that feels really, really good about this year. You know, and it's what's exciting. Kemba's oh. coming home party. Yeah, yeah. And Kemba and Fournier, the new guys, and they've already played together, so they have camaraderie, and it's. It's pretty exciting, and I know it makes Mike sick, and you know, yeah. it, it really it does. No, what do, that doesn't make me sick to have. I mean, I understand from your perspective. And this is, in all honesty, you, you, you've had a dif- dysfunctional franchise for a while, so right. it does feel good to be to be boring in a good way, and have young talent, and have guys that you can root for that you feel will be taking the next leap and taking the next step. And yeah, it's the preseason. There's no wins or losses right now, so it should be all optimism, uh, optimism and excitement. But there's nothing. There's nothing the net fan can do to take that away from the Nick fan unless losses start occurring, then things will change fast. But at the same time, I, you know, I would like to keep perspective. The net fan should shouldn't should not get super upset about the Nick fan being excited and optimistic, understanding that they're in their championship window. And this is one of the years to get it done. And even with all said and done and one of their players not on the roster currently, they're still in the championship window. So I can't, uh, you know. Yeah, I want to see the Knicks lose. I'd be lying if I wouldn't. Just like the Knicks fan wants to see the Nets lose, wants to see the Celtics lose, wants to see the Sixers lose. Their team in their division. Why do you want to see the Knicks lose so bad? I mean, haven't we lost enough for you? Don't don't you want to see like the Lakers lose? Why why you want to pick on us? Uh, I don't like the Knicks a lot. I mean, they really, uh, really (laughs) get on put. I just don't like them. I mean, I I would. It's like hating the guy that's picked last in gym. Like, like I don't understand it. You know. (laughs) Hey, you said it, not me. Who who, do you like? A football team? I I see. Maybe you got something in the background. The Giants. Yeah. yeah. My one of my favorites. I got my signed photo from Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw. I met them at a a trade show and uh, got to shake their hand and talk to them a little bit. But uh, yeah. So let, let, me, let me ask you. Let me ask you this question: When was the last time the Dallas Cowboys won a Super Bowl? Uh, 1995, I believe. So, are you happy that they're enjoying some success right now, or would you want them to be crap? I mean, the difference is they've been like mediocre the last, you know, 20 years. They haven't been bad. We've been really bad. So agreed. But I'm just uh, saying, from the the understanding of if you're a Giants fan, you wouldn't want to see the Cowboys have success, and when they do. It is annoying, and that's all I'm saying. And I wouldn't fault you, as I'm a Giants fan. I don't. I, I hated seeing what happened in that Cowboys game. Have, they also have six Super Bowls. I mean, how many championships do the Nets have? The Nets I mean, have zero Super Bowls. Exactly. Like we, you know, we could use another example from another <laughs> zero team. Super Bowls. We yeah, no. Well, that. the example is the Bills for me for the Jets because the Bills are bad for so long, and then now they're good. I don't have that hate for them like I used to when I was a kid, and when they had Jim Kelly and Thurman Thomas and you know Andre Reid kept crushing us. But now it's like they're good. You're like, all right, whatever. It's not like the Dolphins and the Patriots being good. That really annoys me. You know, and I've so. also this, their time has come. Their time, right, has come. right. And give also, it another two years, and I'll be like, all right, enough. But right now, I'm like, whatever. You know, <laughs> I've also decided on this rule just now, Booty. Tell me what you think about this. <laughs> what, what? How old Booty. are you? What year are you born? How old are you? I'm born in 1986. All right, I'm born in 83. Right. Okay. So if 84. you're not alive <laughs> to see the championship, it's really tough to be like. I hate people in general that are like. Oh, we got the six, seven rings. 
or Yankee fan. Twenty seven right? championships they, after yeah. they lose <laughs> the Red Sox. A funny way of putting it because technically I was alive. We won in eighty six. The, the uh, Giants in eighty six nineteen. I give you that. I give you that. I'm alive for all four. <laughs> I get. Hey, me too. I get it. But it's it's the the anoint is like a Yankee fan, right? Who says we have twenty seven rings? Well, if you've been alive for nineteen twenties, don't count. <laughs> you don't celebrate that one. You don't. You don't. You know. Come on. So there, I think there's some limitations to it. Anyway, point is the Knicks last one championship in nineteen seventy. So I'm trying to pull it all together to defend your good snarky witty comment back at me. In a long way, that's how I did it. But I'll give you credit. That was a nice comment. Good job. <laughs> great work. Great work. Great work. Um. So what else? So what are you into anything else? Any other sports or is it just basketball that's your is your number one kind of? I know you said the Giants, but is basketball your number one? Yeah, it, uh, it's basketball and football for me. Uh, college basketball. My dad went to Villanova, so I grew up watching Villanova basketball. So my dad really influenced my basketball fanship a lot. And, uh, you know, fortune Villanova is probably the most successful team I'm a fan of. But I'm not as passionate about them as I am about Giants and Knicks. So. Well, you'll be, you'll be, fu- it'll be funny. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you a question. <laughs> Who is your favorite Villanova basketball player of all time? Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry. Right. Uh, away. No, okay. Number two. Number two. Number two. Tim Thomas. Probably I'll put Tim Thomas up there <laughs> because he's a Jersey boy. So I'm always going to ride my Jersey boys. Number three. We're just going to go. I'm going to do this all night. Number Keep three. Going. Number three. Number three. Ah, uh, shit. Uh, I guess Randy Foy would be number three. <laughs> Anybody older, like during the Iverson era. Are you killing me? Wait till uh, you have the punchline. <laughs> it's worth it. You just got to go. Got to go with the Nets fan. Just trust the Nets fan. Uh, Kerry Kittles. Go ahead. I know. I know you're going to say Kerry. You're waiting for Kerry Kittles. All right. Yes. You yes. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Well, if you need, you must know you were, are on an episode with Kerry Kittles because we just interviewed him and he's going to be on. He's on the show too. Wow. So yeah. yeah. That's pretty exciting. That's why we both smile when you said Villanova. We're like, oh my god, <laughs> it's so perfect. And then you didn't say his name. We kept going down the list. It was it was hilarious. All right, final question. So, we end all the interviews with this, and then we will uh, let you get back to watching Knicks preseason preseason basketball against the worst team in the NBA and the Detroit Pistons. What <laughs> is the what? Where do the? Thank you for laughing. Where do the Knicks finish in the season, and where do the Nets finish in the season? Whatever you say will become reality. But be honest. That's all I ask. Just be honest. I'm going on record on a podcast that's listened by lots of people, so i got to be real careful about the overly optimistic uh, projection. I'm going to say I'm going to say 52 wins. That's what I have. That's the magic number. 52 and 30. Uh, you know, 43 wins last year. What would that have been in the equivalent 82 season? It would have been about 50 wins, right? So I think we improved. We got Fournier. We got Kemba. Um, if Mitch can stay healthy, big if. Uh, very we, big uh, yeah maryland's coming off the bench one of the best backup centers in the nba 52 wins fearless forecast take it hey, to the bank. there you go okay and what where are we what are we what are we doing in the playoffs are we going all the way are we upsetting people what's happening i want to say we win one playoff series maybe two I, i'm going to say we win one playoff series and go seven games. I'm not going to say if we win a second round, but I'll say we'll take it seven games in the second round. And the Nets? I mean, <laughs> it, I, I don't know if Kyrie's going to play all year. Like, what's it, Is he going to pull a, a U-turn and get a vaccine a week from now and, and show up? To him? At this point, Ben Simmons is on the Sixers. We didn't think he was going to even be back. So, yeah. I mean, you're asking me to be a crystal ball here, but I, think I get that, it. It's tough. I understand that. I think the Nets will win 56, 57 games this year, I think. And, and in the playoffs? And in the playoffs, I think they'll probably go to the Eastern Conference Finals again. I, I don't know if they'll win it, but I think they'll probably be there. Just, you know, too much talent, too much. I mean, how do you, who's guarding Durant? It's a tough question. We don't really have an answer for that. So as good as our team defense is, when you've got a guy like Kevin Durant who can score and shoot over anybody, it doesn't really matter sometimes. It's true. That's I very true. Unfortunately, I, I love ending these with that. It's just so it's really refreshing to hear the Nick fan base just have to be like, and what about the Nets? And it's always the collective. Uh, well, Alex knows my Twitter. <laughs> he knows I'm a realist. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. That's how we get along. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we know how to bust balls, but we also it's all truthful. It's not no Homer like nonsense talk. It's it's That's real, good. real basketball talk. What do you think? 52 wins? Am I, am I crazy, Alex? 
I for the Knicks, I, I think it's I think around fifty is fair, give or take. You know, two three two to three wins either way. I, it depends on health. You know, as you said, you know, with Mitchell Robinson and and Noel's banged up too. He hasn't played yet in the preseason. And I already saw Julius Randle twisted his ankle. I'm sure he's fine. He's, he stayed in the game, but I don't know why you push a guy in the preseason when they get knocked it. And I think Rose like took took a low bridge at some point too in the game today versus the Pistons. So I, it's just I don't know why they're pushing them so hard in the preseason. I get it's Tibbs thing, but that could end up biting them in the ass. But overall, healthy if and if RJ takes a step is is really the key. And RJ is like the key to everything right now. I know Kemba and whatever, but if he takes a step, they can be scary. And so far, looking at RJ's career, he's made those steps. 14 right. points rookie year, 17 points a game. If he goes to 20 and, and, you know, like seven or eight rebounds a game and makes that next leap like he's been doing so far in his career, 52 wins. Fearless, man. I'm going with it. There we go. Yeah, and second round's got to be the got to be the goal. I mean, I know you want the championships a goal always, but realistically, they got to get past the first, unless they go in the first round. They go out in seven, and it's a hard for it. But you can't go down with a whimper like they did this year versus the Hawks and get smacked around. You know, you can't gonna, do that again. I'm gonna put it like this: anything less than two playoff series wins, I'm gonna be disappointed. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right. Well, I will. Well, thank you for coming on. <laughs> Appreciate it. The it was a lot of fun. I'm going to keep playing the contest, so hopefully I'll make another appearance. Yeah, yeah, yeah hopefully. Maybe, yeah, Nets fans don't know how to win. win. Besides Mike, besides Mike, Mike wins it all the time for some reason, but no Net fan has won yet. We've had, you know, now it's four Knicks fans that have been on the podcast. So I just well, te- technically it should be two. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say, Buddha? That just goes to show that there's a lot more Knicks fans out there. It's, no, it's they're just true. smarter. I don't know about they're a lot more. They're just better. We're smarter at football. Yeah, football better. Better, better <laughs> guessing which quarterback's going to do well. Anyway, oh, uh, what was your main? What was your main? Sorry, one more question. What was your main player for fantasy football that that crushed it for you on Sunday? I, I started Kadarius Tony. He was in my lineup. I mean, that was a That's accurate. the guy. And it wasn't just your contest. It was also in season long. I I had the stones to start him in a couple of season long nice. leagues. So nice. Off. There you right. go. Delicious. Thanks for coming on Bad Weather Fans. We appreciate it. And uh, maybe we'll see you down the line in the future if you can uh, get another W in the FanDuel League or Fantasy Football League. We don't have a sponsor, I should say. In our Fantasy Football League. So thanks, man. FanDuel Daily Fantasy. Thanks, yeah. Thanks a lot. I, I think the contest is a great idea, a, a great addition to the show. So I'm looking forward to coming back on, boys. Thanks for coming. It. At Bootalicious on Twitter. Follow them. <laughs> thanks. Guys. All right, thank you, Bootylicious, for coming on Bad Weather Fans. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And again, he's we, awesome. we, ta- we talked awesome. to Booty before uh, the Kyrie Irving IG news did come down as well. So yes, yes. Just want to reference that if there's something that this sounds a little different or da- dated, just so you know, we did. But uh, congrats. Hey, guys, check it out. Fandu link at Nick Central at Mike Delivers Pod. We put out the link on Friday into the weekend. Click on it. It's $1. If you win, you get to come on the Bad Weather Fans Podcast. All right, Alex. Let's get to the poll question and then Jersey stuff. Guess what? The poll question is actually about basketball. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that we can actually talk about basketball? Like, thank you for, as I had an initial poll question, I ran it, like, kind of ran it by you. Like, what do you think about this? I couldn't think of an idea for the poll question. I do it weekly at Nick Central on Twitter. And it was about Kyrie and what Nick Sands think about Kyrie. But thank God. We didn't. I, I deleted. I told that. you. I just got to be honest. It was good. You. So you're, you are a producer. You should, you know, get into that business. I think you'd be really good at it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I realized. Um, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't pay. <laughs> okay. So uh, by the radio, way, Mike was there. It was a producer for radio. ten years at CBS Sports Radio. Just so everybody knows, if you don't get the joke. So anyway, Knicks fans, given the current state, uh, current. Let me start over. Knicks fans, given the current state of the roster, do you think the rookies get buried on the bench? Oh, yes or no? Yes or no? And then comment who plays. Yes. What do you because think? Because you have so many veterans and so many other younger players that need time for this team to succeed. I can't imagine the young players getting minutes. I could see it here or there when injuries pop up. But for the most part, no. I don't expect them to get major minutes. Right. But if they do, maybe someone will perk up. And also with the history from Tibbs, I'd be surprised if he did. Let's sort of think about last year when Emmanuel quickly was playing as well as he was, and he wasn't even getting the minutes Nick fans wanted. I have a hard time believing now. You, you like that I gave good good Nick points. You I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm like, go, man. You're like a Nick oh, fan I'm, now. I'm not Evan will be mad at Evan Roberts would be upset with you that you're bringing no, on the Knicks keep, like this. Yeah. 
It's just here's what it is. If you watch the games, you can give points about it. It's just it's just mm-hmm. how it works. It is what it is. You follow it, you know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. So my point well, is quickly did play a lot. He played consistently, but he yes. should have started over but Alfred a lot. You know, I just whatever. can't anyway. imagine now with more depth with the Knicks that these guys will get minutes. I'd be surprised. Yeah. So the fans voted yes, 80% yes, no is 19.8%, obviously. Uh, yeah, like you said, you know, I don't know what rookie's going to play. Quentin Grimes is the first round pick, but I think everybody's most excited about Deuce McBride and Jericho Sims. But Jericho Sims is probably not going to play if Mitch and Noel get healthy. He'll probably go to the G League. So I can't see an avenue for any of the young players really getting a lot of minutes. Maybe Grimes because he can shoot. So he, he can get, you can always carve out a role for yourself if you can get in there and hit a couple threes, you know, get hot. But so let's see some comments. Uh, let's see. So we have our boy Bobby B at Rude Boy MYK. At best, it will be similar to what happened with Obi. Hopefully not the one minute game though. But I can see them getting more minutes next season. Yeah, Obi was was injured and was coming back from injury, and and Tibbs played him one minute in a game once. And in that one minute, Alfred Payton missed an obviously open, obviously an open alley oop, and his his line zeros across the board. So that ruined his point per game stats for the whole season. But he didn't play that well during the season until the playoffs anyway. So anyway, I'm rant- I'm rambling. So James Celestin at Rebirth Chaos 9 I think Grimes gets playing time because of his abilities to shoot. Tibbs says they have to earn it, and that's what I see. Okay. Our boy Jamaican Paulie at call underscore me underscore Faust, F-O-S-T. Yes and no. I feel Grimes has a better chance to play because we are thinner at the three, more so than the point guard. Yeah, Deuce McBride is a point guard. Let's see who else we got. Uh, at... We have Maurice Mo Brown at Mo Breezy 213. I think injuries will force McBride and Sims into the rotation. Um, let's see. We have Jasper NYK 2 0 at Knicks on Clutch. Probably Grimes and Deuce. Sims could be a very valuable player for now, but well, let me start over. Probably Grimes and Deuce. Sims could be a very valuable player for now, but that Mitch and Nerlens are out. So I think them both are buried on the bench. But maybe tonight when we play the Pistons, maybe they can get their chance of getting minutes. So Grimes and Deuce, uh, that's a good, she's a good fan of ours. Uh, funny tweets. Uh, let's see. That's our, that's our homegirl, Mike. Then we have uh, Tim Shady at Tim Rice Aroni with an I. Uh, I mean, Aroni's always spelled with an I. <laughs> <laughs> that seems uh, definitely. But why is that a bad thing? All that tells me is that we have some legit depth. These kids will be able to learn behind some great players, and when they get their chance to play, odds are it will be meaningful minutes. See, I don't know about that. That's always the uh, chicken and the egg kind of thing. Do rookies get better by playing or by sitting and watching? I mean, it's like the quarterback in the NFL. Play. Did they get better play when they sit for a year or when they play? You know, I think playing I think for always NBA play. NBA play. I agree. Quarterback in the NFL. It depends on the situation. I, I think. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think here is the question: Is are they better when they get the when they are forced to be a young team and they're the leaders and they lose a lot and get terrible like glorified stats because out of necessity or like a t- a team that they join that has stars and they can be a role player and learn that way I, I'd be curious what that better end game is in that scenario yeah like the, the role player I think is the best way for an NBA player to get in there you know what I mean like Cam Thomas but, of the Nets is going to get I mean especially with Kyrie yeah the way he now he has the score, avenue he's, he's yeah. going to get he's going to get and, and that Shamit's gone they're going to mm. need a guy off the bench that can get buckets and and he, he's just he's just stepped into another five to seven minutes per night he's a bucket getter happening. he's a bucket getter huh he has Cam Thomas, good. the bucket getter yeah no I mean you always need a bucket getter on the bench and let's do one more Knicks and Dimes at Knicks and underscore Dimes. I think they'll get worked in through the season like OB and IQ. That's Emmanuel quickly, Mike. Maybe not as much playing time because of our guard depth. So pretty much the same answers all around all across the board. Uh, I don't know. It's just nice to talk basketball. Knicks won tonight. So that was cool. Uh, you know, Randall and Rose, you know, got a little banged up, but I'm sure they're fine. So I want to give a on shout to the out. season. I want to give a shout out uh, on Twitter yes. to the. Um, Net fan, the sixth borough, who, uh, who gave us yeah. a really nice shout out on Instagram and is a good fan of the Bad Weather Fans podcast. So that that that's appreciated from both of us. Thank you for for sharing the love and spreading the love about this pod. Uh, and he wanted us to talk a little Jets. I don't know if I have that in the mix tonight. That we'll be doing uh, we'll be doing Zach Wilson quarterback comparisons with Josh Allen. We'll save that yeah. for another time. But no, thank thanks. you, yeah, thank yeah. you, this is bro. Jets lost, Giants lost, Giants got injured, Knicks, Jets, you know, 
you, you the game plan sucks, and they got down seventeen nothing, and they lost, and that's it. Another bye week. Who cares? You know, I'm over the Jets right now. <laughs> okay, Jersey fast. trivia. Uh, I'm not over them, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, go ahead. so Dolan Trump sponsors this. He wanted me to let you guys know the IQ shirt and the Make Nick's Great Again in home whites. Any short a shirt order for the rest of the preseason gets a free mask. Oh, nice. See, yeah, he's so, he's trying to help the pandemic. And so you know, Donald J. Trump, man of the people. Need some some merch. Check them out. Yeah. So Jersey number trivia. We did uh every episode early on. We did uh jersey number on each side. Let's say we're episode number 34. I'd ask him an ep- uh, I'd pick a player on the Nets, and he'd have to guess. I'd pick he played a player on the Knicks, I'd have to guess, but now we're on 86. And uh, Dolan J. Trump now gives us random jerseys. He texts us each, and we have to guess it. So who wants to go first? Do you want to go first or me go first? I'll read to you first. Okay, let's do it. Is that how we did it last time? I don't remember. I'm, who knows? Who cares? Kyrie clogged my brain. I can't think of anything else right now. <laughs> I'm too right, woke he now. Wore, he wore 32 during the 2018 season, his only year playing for the non-dysfunctional New York team. 2018? Number yeah. 32. Okay. Go ahead. He was drafted ninth overall in 2014 by the Hornets. Wow. Why am I drawing a blank? You're overall. not good at the recent ones. Yeah. The recent one numbers. Yeah, I'm not why. really good. 90s. I crush it. <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. I don't even know what number the players are now. It's, it's weird. All right. In, in his yeah. seven year career, he has played for seven different organizations. Portland, Minnesota, Charlotte, New York, Denver, Chicago, and most recently, the team that is self-destructing in Brooklyn. Number 32. So is it Henry Ellison? No. no. 32. Even though he was drafted by the Hornets, he was, a, he was dealt alongside Gerald Henderson for Nick Batum during his rookie season. So he's dealt to where? Even though he was drafted by the Hornets, he was dealt alongside Gerald Henderson for Nick Batoon during his rookie season. So he doesn't say. So he's traded to the I'm Blazers. Just reading his guessing. questions. What's that? No, I, uh, was it the Blazers he was traded to? No, he didn't play for the Blazers. Right? His Blazers. longest tenure was with Portland, where he played three seasons. It's not Jimmer, right? No. Not with the Jimmer. Knicks, he started 57 of 68 games. Average eight points, eight rebounds, both career highs. Oh my God. Now I need to get this. 57 games he started. He averaged eight and eight, which is respectable for this trivia. <laughs> this trivia is like 3.2 usually. 30. And he was what? What position did he say? He doesn't he say. Oh, a- he attended the same university as Jared Jeffries. That doesn't help me. Doesn't help me either. I, I don't know where I can't remember. Was it Ohio State? Why do I think it's Ohio State? I'm seeing red in Jared You're Jeffries. Thinking of uh, not Ohio State, but it was a red. Whatever, some kind I of red school. Is. You can't yeah. look it up. No, I won't. Uh, number 32, 57 games. Doesn't give me a position. That really crushes me. 32. Indiana. Duh. Should have known that. Indiana, see red. See, I got the red. You did. Uh, I don't know. I'm lost. You done? Unless you want to give me another clue. I got no new it. clues. Can you give me a position? Can you like at least give me that? He's Maybe big. I can guess that. This is a big man. Eight and eight. Yeah, he's big. Eight and eight. He's yeah. Not too big, but he's big. <laughs> he's medium big. <laughs> I don't he's know. Bigger I than us. Uh, Noah Vonley. Ah. Oh. See, that's the problem. You're right. I think it's the more recent players. You don't associate with the numbers as you did when we were kids. I think it was all about the numbers. That, right? Yeah. It's just because I couldn't get even get Damian Dotson that time, but I got DeMar Johnson. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I got, you know, I don't think uh, you're getting Doug it through the jersey numbers. I think it's the, the questions. The clues. That trigger. Yeah. yeah. And the jersey right, number is like a helpful. Oh, yeah. That's right. Sorry. I get to play too. Noah Vonley had a huge dunk once. I think it was on a Nets player. I think it really was. It was on a Nets player. It was huge. It was like a monster dunk. Yeah, but anyway. yeah I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, it's probably Jared Allen. It's always Jared Allen. No, I'm just kidding. You know why it is always Jared Allen? I'll defend Jared Allen. Because he, yeah, because he goes Cause for he, it. He yeah, goes no, for it. He tries. That. Other guys yeah. just move out of the fucking way. Anyway, yeah. yeah. 
And that's one thing about Porzingis that I always respected. He went for the block. He always you went for the, the block. block you're going to be, you're going to be, get the block and you're going to be the poster. It happens both ways. Yeah. Yeah. He's not making business decisions, Jared Allen. So, okay. He wore number 44 during the 2017 season in the borough that doesn't let unvaccinated players play. <laughs> This guy, well, this guy. I mean, oh, okay, hold on. Between all that, number forty-four in twenty seventeen. Yeah, in Brooklyn. is um. Okay, it's on the tip of my. Keep going. I think you'll get this. I told him. I texted him. This is too easy. 2017, 2018 or 2016, 2017. He just says 2017. These clues suck. You got to give us more. <laughs> they're like halfway. They're like half clues. No, that's it's a just, give me the whole clue. That's a difference. <laughs> if it's a, you know. Yeah, of course. The whole season. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He carved out an eight-year career after being drafted 17th overall in the 2012 draft. Bye. Okay. Here's an. It doesn't say. <laughs> Although he was drafted by the Dallas Mavericks, a team he never played for, he played for seven different teams, including the likes of Milwaukee, Boston, Atlanta, Cleveland, Memphis, and San Antonio. I feel like. I feel like if I wasn't exhausted right now, I could get this. But my my my, my brain is fried. You're gonna be angry when you don't get this yeah give me give so, me i still have time yeah you have th- a few more yeah he gave you a lot of clues i got didn't get these many clues. so uh he was named to the all rookie team after averaging eight points and six boards for the Cavs. so he got traded to the Cavs. and uh, i'm putting it together for you yeah. i hate when he says oh he was drafted by the mavericks but never played it was straight like how, that doesn't help thing. that's that's just to throw you off you know Cavs number 40. I'm like, I'm I'm fried. I, I know I'll know this. Okay. My brain is whack. His best statistical years occurred while playing with the Celtics, and he attended the same college as Mr. Vince Carter. Okay. So, so now we're getting going. somewhere. And that's everything. He comes from a big family. He comes from a big, like, like a lot of kids or like a large people. I can't, I can't give you the answer to that. That'll give it away. Um all right, so he went to North Carolina, number forty-four. Uh, so I'm going to be so mad when I don't know this. Is it? It's not yeah, Marvin right. Williams. He wasn't a net. No, was he a net at some point? Dude, I'm not. I, we've gone uh, on long enough. I'm not even going to try. Who is it? And we're too tired. It's Tyler Zeller. Oh yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It's a guy. I feel. I figured you would have yeah. gotten. He was. It's he hard. Was barely man. there. He was barely there. He, yeah, but still, as Zeller, he's got that's a big family. He's got brothers. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. Dude, it's a I'm, person I'm you can fried. remember. I've done yeah, se- we've done seventy two hours of podcasting night, Kyrie. We've done six versions of it. Dolan, buy Dolan shit and leave us alone. Yeah, Kyrie, Dolan, leave us alone. Brains. Yeah, <laughs> he's having a fun time on Twitter right now. I took off Is the he? mute band. I gotta look at it. Yeah. Oh my god. All right. Well, that's a podcast. him and Nets Daily now are in cahoots. They're just they're both they're both retweeting each other because they're just so they're 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 both. Not into Kyrie, but for this has been Bad Weather Fans, episode 86 B. (laughs) Thanks for coming on the podcast. We appreciate it, guys. It's been fun. We're having a good time. A lot of shit happened. You know, it's the first time we had a live episode. I think that's pretty dope. You know, the live breaking news, in all honesty. So uh, cool to have that happen. Thank you again to Carrie Kittles. Thank you again to Villanova standout Carrie Kittles and Villanova fan Bootylicious. Things you say together and uh, good stuff. Uh, Alex, we'll, we'll see you next time for 87. Yeah, we have our big fantasy basketball draft on Monday. We'll talk about that next week. I don't know if anybody's into that, but that'll be fun. Mike's first year doing fantasy basketball for the yearly fantasy basketball. Never done it. And never done it. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. And I am the commissioner, so I can cancel your team if you get out of line on this podcast, just so you know. Anyway, That's fine. Thanks I, for listening. honestly, if you did, I'm doing it as a favor to you. So please. <laughs> Well, it costs money, so seventy-five bucks. I I didn't know you didn't tell me that. (laughs) Where was that? Seventy-five bucks. Jeez, that's a lot of Uber Eats. Well, you don't have to pay. You don't have to pay until the end. So, like, if you win or place in the top three, you don't have to come out of pocket. So that's what we do. So put away like five bucks a month. Now he tells me. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) savings great. All right, bad weather fans. Episode eighty-six, the Kyrie Instagram Live edition. Talk to y'all later. And Carrie Kittles. And Carrie Kittles. Thank you, Carrie. More importantly, Carrie Kittles. Yes.